Once you have logged in to your online USCIS account, you can see a menu of options to choose from. To complete the I-765 online, you want to select the My USCIS option. From there, you will be redirected to another menu. You will want to choose to file a form online. Next, you will see a list of the forms that you can choose to file. To apply for OPT, select the Application for Employment Authorization, I-765. On the next page, be sure to read through all of the information. It's going to tell you the steps to apply, your eligibility, your fee, and the documents that you might need. It's also going to give you some information about what you can do after you have submitted the application. Click Next after you have read everything. On the next page, there's more information that you will need to read about security and privacy. After you've read through everything on the page, click Start. So here you need to select the eligibility criteria, which is C37 as STEM extension. The required documents for the STEM OPT extension request is STEM OPT I-20 issued by ISS, all other I-20s copy of I-94 record, change of status, uh, if you have I-797 approval notice, or a copy of the previous EAD card, front and back if applicable. This is required for 24 months term OPT extension. If you don't have a previous EAD card, you must copy passport page. A color passport style photo which is taken recently. Additional documents may be needed depending upon your specific situation major section to complete first of all there is a section called as getting started and confirmation of eligibility if you are filling post completion opt then the category is c3b but it is 24 month extension that i am talking about so it is c3c extra questions what is your degree provide the name of your stem eligible degree must be a major listed so my degree is PhD electrical and electronics engineering but the space is not sufficient so I'm writing PhD electrical engineering and then I will add in the additional information and I will explain more about my degree what is your employer's name as listed in a verify you need to check ask your employer what is their name as listed in a verify and you need to mention their official name what is your Employers e verify company identification number is uh, e verify number is different than the EIN and it is not listed on your I 983. You need to ask your employer if you do not know about this number. What is your reason for applying? The reason for applying is for STEM OPT. So, in order to mention that, you need to select the renewal of permission to accept employment. If you are applying for pre-completion OPT or post-completion OPT then you need to select initial permission to accept employment now have you previously filed I-765 yes and uh, this is if you have received a previous EAD card it means the answer is yes so that is STEM OPT applicant should select yes otherwise you need to select as no is someone assisting you with completing this application you should select as no although you are watching this video what is your current legal name this is the name that should match with the one that is given in your passport have you used any other name answer according to your situation i have never used any other name so i have selected no then you need to fill in your contact information the phone number the email address you need to mention the email address which is personal to you not uh, the one that is mentioned in your university and then you need to mention your current us mailing address this might be sometimes different from your physical address but if it is same then you need to click on yes over here now here if you are sending to someone else's address you might do that in case you are not sure you will be staying at the same location for the next three months if you are staying at the same location for the next three months three to four months then you can give your address you need to mention in the address line one then a city state a zip code
the part will ask about your gender next you need to mention your gender and what is your marital status then in the next you need to mention your city town or village of birth and then the state or province of birth these details are mentioned in your passport so please copy the exact spelling from there what is your country of birth this might be the same country of citizenship or might not be it, it is just the country of birth what is your date of birth you need to mention over here then next is what is the country of citizenship or nationality it is the country of your passport then you need to check this uh, record number in your i-94 you need to download your i-94 the latest i-94 record should not download the i-94 history please remember that and then when did you last arrive this information is also located on the i-94 record the place of arrival is not mentioned so you need to see your ticket and understand which airport it was for dallas there are two options but i came at dfw so i'll be mentioning dallas fort worth international what is your status when you arrived uh, most people it is f1 and what is your passport number the recent passport that you need to mention if you have any travel document number most people with passport do not have them then you can leave it blank what is the expiration date of your passport you need to add that date of expiry from your passport so in the mmdd yyyy format what country issued your passport you need to mention your country of citizenship what is your current immigration status for most people who are applying for stem opt it is f1 what is your service number this is located on the first page and the second page of your i20 and it starts with n so you need to add that and for example if you have multiple service numbers if you have done multiple degrees in united states then you need to use additional information section to include all your previously used service numbers then here what is your a number a number is basically the uscis number that is located on your ead card on the first page if you see it, there is uscis number that starts with a number so you just need to mention that particular number over here if you did not have any previous ead card then you need to click on this what is your uscis online account number this will be populated by itself or you can click on this option if you do not have then you must have had ssn number because you have already started working then you need to click on yes and provide your social security number over here and you do not want ssn office to issue you another ssn card so you need to click on no in the next you need to basically attach your photo and that photo needs to be of the format of two inch by two inch and also please follow your head size it should lie between 50 percent to 60 percent of the height of the photo so just make sure and you also follow all the requirements never wear eyeglasses there should not be glare it should be on the white background the tilt of the head uh, should be uh, straight towards the camera so all those other things you can go and now uh, visit their website and check what are the requirements for the photo for us passport and us visa in the next page you need to upload i-94 document and uh, make sure that it is not i-94 history document and then you need to click on form i-94 so here either of these three forms you can upload but you actually have to upload i-94 okay in the next you need to provide your ead card the ead card front and back as a pdf file then also attach passport over here then attach visa us visa over here although it is asking only for the ead card then you need to upload i20 this is i20 for the stem opt recommendation i20 and then i20 which which has opt recommendation and all the other i20s that you have had since the initial i20 so i have had around 10 i20s i have uploaded all of them then the next one is college degree here you need to add the college degree and then you need to add the transcript also the graduation letter if you have one now in the next 
section this is the institution accreditation you need to provide the evidence only if you are applying the stem opt extension that is based on a previously earned stem degree rather than the one that you have gained recently but i have gained the degree or am applying for stem opt based on the latest earned degree so i'm not going to attach any document over here click on next it will throw a warning click on next then you need to add your responses first of all my employer's name was too long that it could not be incorporated in that particular space so i need to mention over here uh you i need to click on add response then i need to basically click on getting started then click on basis of eligibility then i need to mention the employer's name as listed in the e verify and then i need to actually add the employer's legal name in total uh, what is a complete legal name and then mention the e-verify number okay and then in the same way also my degree name was very long so i need to add my actual degree name over here so that finishes my degree and also if you have had multiple degrees in united states and then in that case you would be having multiple service ids for each degree so you need to click on about you then go to your immigration information then you need to basically student and service number so you need to basically mention a previous service number then you need to mention your service id number and then you need to mention your dates uh, of the degree and the dates that is uh, the starting of the program and the end of the program then comma and you need to mention it was bachelor's degree so that is how you give your previous service information over here now apart from that you are going to mention your eligibility criteria so if you have done opt authorization so opt authorization full name service number then the company name then you need to mention the dates of that authorization and then the degree so in the same way if it is cpt authorization so you are going to add additional response you will be mentioning cpt authorization full-time or part-time one of them then your service id number then company name then the dates of the authorization and the degree on which you did that particular information then you need to click on next you need to read all of this information you are going to pay for ten dollars at the end of this form then click on next then you can basically check all the information that you have filled or you can basically click on print and check the information okay or you can just click on view draft or draft snapshot to be able to pick one of the statements that you understand english and you have filled this application by yourself and then it will ask for your digital signature which is your name and once it is done you pay the fees and then the application is submitted so thank you very much for watching this video if you have any questions please let me know in the comment section i will try my best to answer any of the queries that you have thank you